Are you struggling to figure out how to keep up with your video projects? A disorganized editing process may be to blame. If your current editing workflow feels overwhelming, this is the video for you. Join us as we discuss why proper asset preparation and organization are essential to maintaining an efficient video editing workflow. In this video, you'll learn techniques for speeding up your workflow while keeping your media organized with good folder structure and metadata. We'll also explore how new workflows allow you to capture footage directly from your camera to the cloud so that editing can start right away. Haley here from VideoMaker. There are time codes below if you want to know what we're covering or want to jump to any place in the video. Do you want to edit faster? If so, we have a list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know. To get it, click on this card or on the link in the description. Before you can start working on your editing project, you'll need to gather all the necessary footage and assets and prepare them for the editing process. This is the acquisition phase of editing. It includes establishing a file structure for your projects and organizing your assets into that structure. This is also the time to add metadata, which will help you locate the right shot more quickly while also helping to build up a searchable library of footage you can use in future projects. Preparing your footage in this way may sound like a chore, but taking the time to organize your media and assets as you acquire them will lead to a more streamlined editing workflow. With an efficient video editing workflow, you can stop feeling overwhelmed and start doing your best work. Let's take a close look at each of these pre-editing tasks in a bit more detail. To get started, you'll need to determine how you will keep your assets organized. Design a system that makes sense for the projects you work on most. Think about who might need to access these files and what they might be looking for. That way, you can make its location more obvious. Just don't make your organization system too complex. You'll want to create a simple, logical file structure that you can stick to throughout the life of the project. It's even better if you can stick to the same basic file structure for all of your editing projects. To the same end, you'll also wanna come up with a file naming convention that makes sense for the type of assets you might use. For instance, if you interview several people for a documentary, you may want to include the name of each interview subject, do what makes the most sense for the content you are working with. Establishing and sticking to conventions like these is an easy way to speed up the editing process, but there are other benefits to staying organized. For example, if you are working with a team, using a consistent file structure will make collaboration much easier. Everyone will know where to find the clip they need. And if you need to return to a project, either for revisions or to recycle the project for another use, you will be happy to find a logical file structure that's easy to navigate, even after months or years. The specifics of your organization system come down to personal preference. Just make sure to stick with whatever system you use. Take your time in this initial design phase, but also remember that it may take some trial and error to come up with the best organization system. As you design your system, try to think about all the different types of assets you will be using and how best to categorize them. Then create folders for each type of asset within your main project folder. There are a number of different types of assets you may need for any given project. These can include the A roll and B roll, as well as any stock footage that will be included in the production. You'll also want to designate a place to store any audio files, motion graphics and templates, and project files that will be created for the production. In nonfiction productions, a role is generally any shot featuring someone talking to the camera. It could be an interviewee in a documentary or a presenter in a tutorial video, like this. For narrative work, a role refers to shots of the principal action or dialogue needed to move the story forward. B-roll is the additional footage that provides visual support for the ideas presented in the A-roll. This could include shots of the interviewee performing their work in the case of a documentary, or a demonstration showing a technique discussed in the case of a tutorial video. In fiction, B-roll adds to the atmosphere of the scene. In any case, having a robust collection of B-roll gives you more flexibility when editing. If a particular cut between two A-roll shots isn't working, you could try splicing in some B-roll to smooth out the transition. Maybe you want to avoid an awkward jump cut. B-roll can help. You can also use B-roll to adjust the pacing of the edit or to give important moments time to breathe. Unfortunately, many editors won't have a say in how much B-roll the production crew provides. If you don't already have the shot you need, consider using stock footage. 
Stock footage is a great way to include visual examples and add atmosphere without inflating the production budget. If you do decide to go the stock footage route, Adobe Stock, included with the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, can help you find, license, and use stock footage within the Premiere Pro interface. Adobe Stock includes assets like high-resolution photos, 4K and HD video and stock footage, and audio. You can also use watermarked stock footage as placeholder clips for anticipated footage. Then, when the real footage arrives, you can simply drop the new clips into the timeline. As you collect stock footage for your productions, make sure to organize and label them in a way that makes sense with the rest of your footage. Another way to stay organized is to establish a system that delivers footage automatically from the camera to the appropriate folder. Camera to Cloud is an emerging workflow that enables quick delivery from set to editorial. Camera to Cloud workflows require a network-connected camera. While there are cameras that feature built-in network connectivity, products like the Teradex Serve 4K and Connect modules allow you to upload proxy files, low-resolution versions of the original video directly from any camera. These add-ons work with cameras ranging from mirrorless cameras to camcorders to professional cinema cameras. Mobile filmmaking app Filmic Pro can also send proxies recorded on your phone to the cloud via cellular data or Wi-Fi. With camera to cloud, footage is sent to a designated cloud destination, landing in a conveniently fixed folder structure. As they arrive, files are shuttled into folders according to attributes like date, file type, or device. Using a camera to cloud workflow means new footage always ends up where it needs to be, and editors can start working immediately, even before production has wrapped up for the day. Another important task you'll wanna complete during the asset preparation stage is adding metadata to each clip. Metadata is any data that gives information about other data. In this case, the other data is your video content. Basic metadata includes the date, duration, and file type for each clip. However, the more detail you add, the more helpful the metadata will be when you are trying to locate a specific clip down the line. The metadata panel in Adobe Premiere Pro allows you to add or edit properties like location, director, camera ID, and content tags, or anything else relevant to your project. Metadata is embedded in the file itself using the XMP metadata standard. This allows metadata to follow a clip between different applications. You can also choose to add clip metadata, which is stored within the Premiere Pro project file. Adding these extra tags helps you build a searchable media database. When you get into the creative flow of editing, you won't have to break up your concentration to look for a specific clip with a vague file name. These more specific tags can also be extremely useful later when you're digging through your archives for that perfect clip you know you shot sometime last June. Editing is a long process, but keeping your footage organized and tagging media with the proper metadata can drastically speed up your workflow. The time savings will far outweigh the initial time investment, especially when you implement a camera to cloud workflow that delivers footage directly to your editing team as it is captured. Keep asset preparation and organization in mind whenever you start a new project. The result will be a faster, easier workflow that lets you do your best work. Remember, if you'd like to get our list of the top 10 keyboard shortcuts you need to know, click on this card or the link in the description. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing and liking this video. In the next video, we'll cover using native footage, transcoding, and proxies. Thanks for watching.